This is Mr. Cloud from Texas for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Now, we have heard time after time uh, Biden, Joe Biden, say that he had no knowledge whatsoever about the business dealings, and that changed. He had never allegedly had a, any conversation with Hunter. Then they moved the ball to say that, well, he didn't have any business dealings, he wasn't involved, didn't have any financial contribution. Since then, we've uncovered about 20 shell companies and we have bank records that bring light to that. And while we can't cover uh, all 20 shell companies in uh, five minutes, I wanted to focus on one, and that is Rosemont Seneca Bohai. Uh, Rosemont Seneca Bohai is, is interesting. Um, and. Uh, Devin Archer had testified, and he said this in his uh, testimony. He said, um, he said that uh, he said that this entity quote was used as a common entity owned 50/50 on a handshake deal between Devin and Hunter splitting these shares. Actually, that was your words, Mr. Galanis. Do you stand by those words? Yes, I do. And Devin Archer agreed with that. He said Hunter was a corporate secretary of RSB and had a handshake 50-50 ownership deal. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And, and primarily this company was set up uh, to uh, initially uh, as a place to hold equity from, from the equity stake of Bohai Harvest. Uh, is that correct? Um, what, what I was told by, uh, by, by the partners at the time was set up to do that and invest in other businesses. I think Devin Archer subsequently testified to that effect. And it, it included monies that were paid from the uh, uh, bond fraud, uh, $15 million that was wired to, to that RSB account as well. Yeah. So it conducted multiple transactions uh, as, as, as you depicted in that uh, uh, diagram. And even if this were legal and there was no impropriety here, it's, it's very concerning because this company set up to basically compete against America's energy in, interests uh, at the behest of CCP. Uh, then we have uh, other flows into Rosemont Seneca Bohai from Burisma. We all know about Hunter's $1 million salary that he received for sitting on the board and providing no uh, actual function there. Uh, and, and so we have one million salary going through Rosemont Seneca to Hunter Biden. And then this is interesting. We have uh, a meeting with uh, Kazakhstani Kins Rekashev. Uh, and, and, and what gets me here is the $300 at the end of the $142,300 that goes into this. And then the next day went to a Porsche dealership uh, for a car for Hunter Biden. Now, what's interesting about all this uh, of course, is that each of these not only flowed money through the shell companies to Hunter Biden, but each of them also involved important meetings uh, with, of course, uh, President Biden. And so on December 4th, we have coffee with Jonathan Lee, who was one of the members who started uh, Bohai Harvest. And uh, he was connected with the CCP. Uh, they were having trouble getting licensed to work because, of course, the CCP has to get permission for that until Hunter flew over with, on Air Force Two with uh, Vice President Joe Biden at the time. They met with Jonathan Lee. Hunter introduced him. Uh, Joe ended up writing a, a letter of recommendation to uh, Jonathan Lee's daughter to get into college. Uh, and then we see that this relationship continues to be formed. Of course, in the Ukraine, we, we know that uh, April 16, 2015, Joe Biden had dinner with a Burisma official at C Cafe Milano. Seemed to be a popular spot because Joe Biden also had dinner with Keynes Rekashev there. Uh, all in flow to going here. And of course, as Tony Pawlinski has pointed out several times, this all comes down to, eventually, uh, the one big guy who gets 10% for the big guy. And so we know that all this money flowed through this to get to Hunter, and then we know, of course, that 10% uh, went to the big guy. So, uh, Mr. Bobolinsky, does this general pattern of Hunter offering foreign access to Joe Biden, Hunter gets paid, and then Joe gets a share of that, is that basically what the general practice across many of these shell companies were? Congressman, as I outlined, uh, the big guys, clearly Joe Biden, the details of some of those transactions I was not involved in, but that's clearly how they operated. But that's the pattern that we've seen over. And Mr. Galanis, you said uh, 
at the beginning that Hunter didn't really provide any sort of intellectual propriety, asset value, or anything of, of the sort, that his entire value uh, was the brand. Is that correct? How did you state that? Yeah, we, we didn't rely on him for any work product other than uh, delivering the Biden lift. The, the Biden lift. And, and one more question for you, Mr. Galanis. Did you offer to provide information on, on Hunter Biden and Devin Archer back in 2016 to prosecutors and the SEC, and what happened there? Yes, yeah, through, through counsel, I had uh, offered to provide information on specifically on that to the SDNY. Um, and I subsequently also did the same thing to the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, which was interested and subsequently was told to quash that interest. Um, I understood that to be in, a, in order from the Southern District of New York to uh, quash the SEC uh, information. Thank you. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, now recognize Mr.